So we are kicking off a new series this month. Happy November, by the way. And our series uh, title is Compassionate Conduits. And today our topic is Divine Authority to Choose. So here's the thing. We are always at choice. In each and every moment of each day, we are at choice as to what to think, what to say what to do and how to be. We're always at choice whether we are aware of it consciously or if we are choosing unconsciously. See, even not making a choice is a choice. For right? sure. Because if we don't choose something, we are allowing some other forces or factors to choose for us. For example, we're in election season. Uh right now and this is a very practical opportunity to practice choosing consciously and to vote our values because even not voting is a choice and there is an impact whether we opt in or out of the choices in our lives there is an impact so there is value in making a conscious choice so that we can take the wheel of our own lives because that's the way that universal law works. We talked a lot about universal law last Sunday, so if you missed that, go back and tune in. The way the universal law works is what we sow, we reap. So what is that we are consciously tuning into, consciously engaging with our thoughts, our words, our actions? And whatever that choice be, whether it be who we vote for or what we wear that day, what we choose to eat, what we choose to consume with entertainment in various ways that we consume, or how we choose to spend our money, or how we choose to speak to someone. There is power in being clear on our intent and choosing from a place of kindness and wisdom and clarity as opposed to reaction or default in which these old patterns are kind of dictating how we respond as opposed to responding, being able to respond from a place of awareness and consciousness. And one of the places we can start is with that little voice in our head, all right? That's something that we all can choose to be aware of and to notice that inner dialogue. And notice if you're always speaking unkindly to yourself, it will lead to unkind choices. Mm. And it's much harder to speak kindly to others if we are consciously engaged in negative self-talk or unconscious thoughts within our own mind. Yet, if we begin to notice that little voice, pay attention to its tone and tenor and words, and become more conscious of how we choose to speak, become more conscious of those thoughts, and to notice it, we can then, as I said, kind of take the reins again of our life and be more conscious. And that way we can create more meaningful relationships in our lives. We can create a better relationship with ourselves and with others. It's up to us. We are always at choice. And the good news is that we can choose again. This is my first time wearing this mask and I'm noticing as I talk, it goes down. So pardon the distraction. So it might be the last time you wear it. It may be the last time. <laughs> All right. So we are always at choice. And I can choose whether this mask is going to work or not. And I can take that information and make a new choice next week or find a solution to make it work better, right? Mm -hmm. Each and every moment when we're present and we're aware, we are aware that we are at choice moment to moment. And the good news is that there's an opportunity once we pay attention to notice where we can choose a new thought and create a new trajectory for thought that will lead us to the desired results. Gary Zukoff says, the power of choice is the greatest gift you have been given, second only to the gift of life itself. We've been given this life 
this gift of life in which we have the power to choose how we direct the energy of life moving through us. We are conduits for spirit. There is a universal creative presence that moves in as and through each of us, and we get to choose how to express it. We get to choose how to express this thing called life. And our invitation this month is to choose to be a compassionate conduit for life. To express this thing called life, God, spirit, universe, whatever word works for you for this cosmic isness, this energy that is that very presence that breathes us. You get to choose how to show up and to express this life living life to the fullest through you as it only can as you. Well, you know, um, it's interesting that we, you know, we've been reaping the benefits of choices or reaping the consequences right. of choices, you know, from the, from the day we're toddlers, you know, <laughs> where we're trying to walk. And I'm, I'm reminded of the third chapter of Colossians, uh, the 12th verse, which reads, so this has been going on for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Um, As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Mm. So kindness, simple kindness, uh, which is what we're really talking about today when it comes to other people and the way we are in our lives to ourselves Simple kindness, and it's about the opportunities that you were referring to, Reverend Rainbow, that we, we have, all of us, to put into practice what is expressed in this verse from Colossians, to treat other people with gentleness, mm. tenderness, mercy, and kindness. And the truth is, sometimes we do, and sometimes we don't. Yep. The place we get to practice the most is with the people that we allow to annoy us the most. (laughs) So the ones that we have judgments about, right? Not that anybody here has any judgments and there's no one that annoys you, right? Or anybody that's listening to the sound of my voice, right? So I'm, you know, and and some of the, the things I'm talking about, for example, is I'm talking about the woman who runs the register at the grocery store. She's had a hard day. Her face is lined with weariness. Her hair is soaked with perspiration. She's worried about picking up her kids on time. She's beginning to be irritated at the customers who refuse to wear their masks above their nose. Right? And we don't know any of this. We just know in our minds that she's not being pleasant. Mm. Right? And Mm -hmm. so we are making a judgment about this woman, and we begin to be rude as well. Mm. So I'm also talking about the guy who is having problems at home and wants to talk about them at work, and we judge it as a bunch of negativity. But really, he just wants a kind, listening ear. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the neighbor or the friend who's lonely. And there's a lot of loneliness going on right now. Who's desperately lonely, but whose loneliness we judge as a continuous and inconvenient demand. Mm. I'm talking about the individual whose English isn't perfect and is washing our car, right? I'm talking about the friend who always has a lot going on in their lives And we judge it as drama. Mm -hmm. And so on and so on and so on. You all have your own examples as well as I have my examples. There are people around us all, all day, every day, which provide us with an opportunity to practice the art of kindness. And I know even though we are practicing social distancing, we still have the opportunity. How about when you turn your TV on? How does that feel? (laughs) When you're watching the news, where's your judgments going? Mm -hmm. You know, what's going on? So regardless of the fact that COVID-19 is dictating most of our lives right now, we still have that opportunity, especially when we're hearing messages that are not about kindness and compassion. Often, lack of kindness, hear me when I say this, is about control. Mm. We want the world to be exactly the way we want it to be, and we want people 
to be exactly the way we want them to be. We, want, we know how they should be acting. Right. Right? <laughs> and we know what they should be doing, and we can fix them. <laughs> right? So it's really about control. When, when they are not when they are not, we use an excuse to treat people unkindly and blame it on them. Mm. Real kindness can only happen when we let go of our need to be right. Mm. That's so key. Yes, yes. You know, I read an article recently in New York uh, Times Magazine, and it was talking about the need for the de the demand really on more good news stories mm -hmm. you know as you mentioned we're just kind of in this constant news cycle of, of so much drama going on in the world and there can be so much negativity but yet what this article spoke to is the statistically how certain uh social media channels and various things are seen like vast growth that are actually sharing good news and good stories because we're desperate to hear, right? We're desperate to hear about our own humanity and kindness. As quoted in the article, Lacken Hutchinson said, it's not that people don't want to know news about the coronavirus. They just want news that shows people come together and fight this and offer ways individuals can help. So I found a few examples Great. of such good news stories that I would love to share with you now. The one title is, Mom Created a Jar of Magical Things to Look Forward to to Help Kids Stay Positive. And so it says, what started as a single Facebook post has now gone viral. A mom, Katie Iboral, has invited, inspired us with post-it notes, a jar, and some positivity. She writes, every time we wish we could do something, go somewhere, treat ourselves, or see someone we love, we are going to write it down and put it in a jar. And the jar has become a bucket list of things to do for our family. And notes such as, stay at grandma's house. And it's taught her children not to take anything, even grandma, for granted. Another article talks about a group of teens who created a website to deliver groceries to seniors. Senior citizens are at the highest risk during the COVID-19 pandemic, and with extra time on their hands from social distancing, California native Daniel Goldberg, a junior student athlete at San Marcos High School in Santa Barbara, along with a couple of friends, wanted to help the elderly in his community. So he created Zoomers to boomers. I love, I love it. it. A website where the seniors at Santa Barbara area can sign up to have their groceries delivered the next day by the high school students. And this act inspired many citizens throughout the country to check in on their own elderly neighbors. And lastly, uh, mi this mystery mom leaves free lunches out every day for anyone who needs it. I love that. This neighborhood in Severna Park, Maryland, is feeling a strong sense of community after a mystery mom leaves bagged lunches outside a busy roundabout with a sign that reads, for anyone who needs it. I'll be leaving some healthy sack lunches on this table, and if you are hungry and need to eat. Made by love from a neighborhood mom in a clean and sanitized kitchen, I will leave this table up from 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Her actions are a reminder that no matter who you are, you can make someone else's day a little bit brighter. So personally, I find these stories super inspiring, you know, the stories around kindness and compassion and, and creating community, which is also one of the things I love about Ahava. We are such a community that reaches out and checks in and supports each other, and that's so needed in these times. But I have to admit, when I was looking at these articles, what I noticed is that all of the stories were from like the first few months in the pandemic, right? And it made me think of that question you invited us at one of the messages back in early June around what is your staying power, right? What is your staying power for COVID-19? So I asked this question today, does kindness have some sort of expiration date, right? Does it have some kind of cutoff? Or is it a way of being that we are consciously choosing to cultivate every day and not just in the wake of a catastrophic event. 
it's amazing all the opportunities that are presenting themselves. And, you know, whether, in, and again, going back to choice, you know, some people choose to act on those opportunities and some people allow other people to act on those, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. opportunities. And I think that we tend to think of kindness um, as very simple, but the reality is it's quite complex. Hmm. Because there are plenty of reasons why we should not take the subject of kindness for granted, right? I think, you know, when we talk about staying power and what you just brought up, here's the thing. Okay, so I'll go out and I'll be aware for the next couple of days after hearing uh, Reverend Rainbow and Reverend Sonny. So I'll be aware of it. But then what happens after that right. awareness fades? So we have to continually cultivate this idea and the subject of, of kindness. Or to put it another way, when the universe, when the universe calls us to kindness, it is a call to really define what kindness is in our lives today. To really define it. And, and I think in this day and age, usually when we use the word kindness, what we mean is something good that wells up in us towards other people. So the truth is, you know, part of me is kind. The other truth is, is that part of me is not so kind. In part of me, the milk of human kindness flows, and in part of me, it doesn't. And that's the truth. That's the reality. So when we normally say, be kind, what I think we mean is to lead from the best part of ourselves. Let that warm caring for other people vibrate out toward them. The problem with that, of course, is it doesn't always work. How many times have you tried to be kind to someone and they're just not taking it? You know, I used that. Uh, <laughs> I could be kind and pick that up for you. I'm just trying to provide uh, opportunities for kindness. <laughs> That's a great example. Thank you. Let's all give Rainbow, Reverend Rainbow, a nice. Yeah, Thank wonderful. Thank you, Reverend wonderful. Sunny, for helping me when my papers fall. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So, all right. So, what I was talking about, I'm just going to keep going here unless you want to throw some more stuff at me. <laughs> you never know. You never know what's going to happen at Ava because we, we are, are organic. We are live. We are live. No folks. doubt about that. Uh, so here's the thing, you know, I was talking about that clerk. One of the things that I do every time I go to the grocery store is I make a point of saying good morning to the clerk and how's your day going? How's your day going? And for the, for the most part, I will get a response of, yes, I'm really busy today or blah, 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 blah. But every once in a while, I'll get someone who doesn't want to engage. Mm -hmm. You know, that they're, they're really for whatever reason. So here's the thing, in past days and sometimes still today, there are simply too many people out there whom I don't think deserve my kindness. Oh, yeah. That's what happens. Okay, so I was kind to you. Yeah. And I, I really tried to be kind to you. And so what happens is inevitably my patience begins to wear thin mm -hmm. and my kindness turns into resentment. Mm. Well, geez, I was trying to be kind to her, but she just wasn't having it. Right. You know, I hope next time I get a different, a different clerk or something. You know what I'm saying? So does this ever happen to you? I mean, am I the only one? You're the only one, Reverend. I'm Sonny. the only one. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. This is what I'm referring to as the human experience. Yes, This we is are coming human. from our human self. Yes, yes, yes. So when we talk about the higher meaning of kindness, it doesn't just mean the best part of me expressed towards others. Let me repeat that. Hmm. When we are talking about the higher meaning of kindness, it doesn't just mean the best part of me expressed towards others. It isn't about drive-through kindness. Mm -hmm. It's not about kindness of convenience. It goes beyond this meaning. 
It means seeing people in the light of what God is doing in the world through all of these individualized expressions of the sacred. All people. So the human part of me is agitated at that individual I let in front of me on the highway who didn't raise their hand and say thank you or anything like that, right? <laughs> Which I expected. I had an expectation of my kindness. All these expectations we put on it, right? Yes, like these layers. Exactly. Of, I'll be kind to you if. Or, if, you know, exactly. And, and you do this. Yeah. I'm going to let it's you in human. on the highway, but right. you better thank me. Right? <laughs> so that person is more than how I'm seeing them in that moment. Mm, good they reminder. are more than how I'm seeing them. Mm -hmm. I believe what we have here is an opportunity to learn. When we really take a moment to be kind, regardless of the appearance of a broken and bruised humanity, yeah. I want you to think about this, that God cannot be broken. God is never less than. Mm -hmm. And so neither can we be. Kindness is a refusal to look at other people as broken or that they need fixing. Oh, that's good. Say that again. Kindness is a refusal mm -hmm. to look at other people as broken or that they need fixing. Yes, yes, yes. So my invitation to you is to let practicing kindness in our choices be simple treat others with kindness yeah you know what's the else treat others as you wish to be treated yes that's a that, that's a, makes a lot of sense to me mm -hmm. friend neighbor clerk sister brother you know family whatever it may be mm -hmm. when it comes to practicing kindness we can ask ourselves are we engaged with spirit or just the world? Mm. Yes. Being spiritual doesn't mean pulling away from the world. What it actually means is bringing your spirit into the world. Yes. So life, spirit, God is living its perfect life as us. And we get to choose to bring that to this world in our fullness of our humanity. And it's knowing that this is how we get to bring our values into form in the reality of this planet and this time and place for a world that works for everyone. This life is expressing through us and we get to be those conduits to make those choices which creates this world that we desire. So what are you choosing today? Are you voting your values? Not only in the ballot box, but in the altar of your own consciousness, are you choosing, are you voting your values? And how are you choosing to express this life energy moving in, as, and through you? Are you aware of the impact that your actions have on others? And your words and your thoughts have on yourself and others. So this kindness applies to ourselves and others. And what's important is to be intentional about it. In order to be intentional, you must first, as we talked about last night, or last uh, month, know what you value. Know this vision that you have for yourself in the world. And as you know what you desire, you can then see how your choices line up in that path. And you can notice, this is the starting point, and this is where I desire to be, and this is the vision I hold for the world. And so as you make your choices along the way, you might have to auto-correct a little bit, right? Just as airplanes, they are flying from, you know, Lexington to Los Angeles, they don't fly in a straight path. There's, they're constantly auto-correcting, going a little bit this way, a little bit that way, but eventually they get from point A to point B. So as we hold that desire and that intention clear in our mind, we're constantly auto-correcting and noticing, though. It takes awareness. Because if we, if we fall asleep to that and we just start veering off this way, next thing you know, you're in Dallas. But you wanted to be in Los Angeles. So you've got to keep that course at the forefront of your awareness of where you desire to be and notice that each choice is what leads you there and that you get to be that compassionate conduit for spirit expressing through you. 
And when you get a little off course, it's not an invitation to beat yourself up. Mm -mm. It's an invitation to love yourself more fully. Because forgiveness is a very important tool in this process. As we begin to wake up and notice how we are treating ourselves and others, there, there may be some opportunities to make some new choices in a loving way. I forgive you for dropping your stuff on the floor and Thank interrupting so. my... Interrupting you, flinging things in the middle of yeah, your message. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Wow. Because I could just throw this on the floor right now, but I'm not going to do it because I'm practicing kindness. Yeah, see, every day there's an opportunity to choose, and I appreciate your awareness and your ability to move into that forgiveness. <laughs> yes, yes. So spirit is 100% engaged with us, and it doesn't mean pulling away from the world and being in an enclave. It means getting to actually step out in spirit as spirit and to be bold for God, be bold for life, be bold as life and allow kindness to lead the way because there is only one you and the world needs you right now to be your full self and to express that love presence that you are to the fullest. Please be yourself. I want to be you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's take this into prayer, yes? <sighs> Shall I start it? I think so. Okay. Let's take a nice deep breath. Good Just one. Noticing the breath. Noticing right here, right now, where your mind is. What is the starting point of this now moment? Becoming a fully aware and present right here, right now. Aware of the ability to choose. To choose to focus on, to notice, to be aware of this one life that is love. This one life that is peace. This one life that is divine order and harmony. Taking this now moment to tune our inner eyes to the truth of this one life, expressing as each of us right here, right now, knowing that this one life is showing up right here, right now, in, as, and through me. And I am so grateful that I have the opportunity to get to choose to express this life as a compassionate conduit, that I get to choose love, that I get to choose to embrace my humanity, and to be kind, not only in the words that I speak to myself, but in the way that I interact with all beings, having grace for myself in times that I may forget, breathing in that state of grace right here, right now, and just letting go of anything from the past, any old ways, anything that even happened two minutes ago, because now is a new moment, and now, we get to choose again. And in this moment, I choose love. In this moment, I step into that space and place of grace and open up to allow this love to flow through me, in me, as me, as I am that channel for love. And I listen and ask for what is mine to do in each and every moment to take this love of spirit, to allow this beauty and abundance of life to express through me in multiple ways of kindness and compassion. So I just take this moment now just to sit and rest in this place of oneness, knowing that divine order is occurring right here, right now knowing that love is who I am, that harmony and peace is here now. And from this place of st steeped in this ultimate truth of life, of oneness, I choose. I choose my words mindfully. I choose my thoughts mindfully. I choose my actions mindfully and I live a life of intention 
showing up and expressing this love in all areas of my life with all beings in my life knowing that everything is an opportunity for me to get to know myself more fully as this one life as God as love so today I am choosing kindness I am choosing to be that compassionate conduit of life as I pass my word to Reverend Sonny. Hmm. And as I just stand in the power and the presence of the eternality of love, the power and the presence of the vibration that I am receiving here in this moment from Reverend Rainbow, as we connect in through and as this thing that we call love, love love and more love i know that with this love comes order and it is the beautiful amazing order that the universe already is and is working in through and as myself and each and every person on this planet i know that right here and right now as the stars align that we are all aligned as the very life that god is in this kindness and compassion knowing that as our choices are revealed within, as our choices are revealed within, that we take the within and make it without. That we bring all that we are, this Holy Spirit that we are into the world and use that as a compass for all of our decisions and choices. Who am I in the world? I am spirit and I am here to uplift and to stand in the power and the presence of the word of the one source of all. The source that is individualizing itself for all and as all. And so I'm so grateful to know this truth. I'm so grateful to stand in the power of the word or to lie upon the altar of love. And it is with a grateful heart that I simply take this word, Spirit's word, and release it into that perfect universal law, knowing that the law always, always must say yes, it always says yes, it always says yes. It is that place of grace. By saying shalom, alhamdulillah, ashe, namaste, this prayer is done, I leave it knowing it is so, so it is, amen.